Merry Christmas. Welcome to the December edition of Cornerstone Connect. We have a very special program planned just for you. Sydney Goldman stops by to tell us of an exciting new adventure with the Glory Hour. And Tom Hollis shares his heart encouraging us to always be expecting. And we have a very special segment with the pastors of hard questions. When they are asked by you, did the Magi see the angels declaring Christ's birth? All that and more coming up next. Welcome, I'm your host, Amanda Brocker, and I just have one question for you. Did you receive your Hope Today newsletter? If you've not gotten that in the mail, we want to send that to you. So please call us at 888-665-4483 or go to www.ctvn.org and let us know that we can connect with you. We want to just let you know what's happening here at Cornerstone. Well, we have so much mail that is coming in. I appreciate every note, every card, every email that you send. It just lets us know what's happening in your world because we are interested. But before I get to it, I want to remind you that in this month's newsletter, Katie Farrell has a delicious Christmas snack mix that I think you will totally enjoy sharing with your family. So please jot down those ingredients. It's like popcorn pretzels, peanuts, M&Ms, some white and chocolate chips and some sprinkles. I think everybody would be delighted to sit around the fire or the movie and eat some of that snack. But going back to our letters here, we have from Donald. He said, thank you for the beautiful card and the encouraging message. It is difficult to lose someone you love. It's that I've been with for 68 and a half years. May God richly bless you for this act of kindness. Well, Donald, we not only sent you that card, but we pray for those of you that are a part of our Cornerstone family. And I know that the Holy Spirit will be your comforter in this season. This little message comes from Joe. He said, keep up the blessed good work for Jesus Christ. Well, Joe, thank you so much for your encouragement. You know, if it wasn't for our donors, we would not be able to do what we're doing here at Cornerstone. So we love and appreciate you. This comes from Kathleen. She said, I just love Cornerstone. It is my church away from church. I love all the programs. And she sent us a gift. Uh, she said her income is very low, but every gift matters. Never feel like, oh, this isn't enough. No, every gift matters. And it's all of us coming together, giving our best. And it's what has kept Cornerstone on the air for over 40 years. But she said, my, may the grace of Jesus be with you all. Tom, Amy, Anna, and Sydney. Well, Kathleen, thank you so much for writing in. And this comes from Zoe. And she said, I'm writing to let you know how thankful I am that you are in the Pittsburgh area and that we can have something uplifting and clean over the airwaves. Win the lost at all costs. I know you are. I watch Cornerstone TV every day along with my Bible reaching and church. I am well fed. So please continue to send me your newsletter every month. They are uplifting too. Thank you, Zoe, so much for that encouragement, and we're thankful to have you as part of our Cornerstone family. And this came from Cindy, and she just wanted to let Anna Fry know that she enjoyed their phone conversation. You know, we call our friends, those that are connected to our Cornerstone family, and it, she said it was as if we were old friends. God bless you. Well, praise God for the work of Cornerstone Television. Our heart's desire is that we truly are there for you, bringing hope to every day. Well, coming up next, my co-host, Tom Hollis, he's gonna encourage us to be expectant. Stay tuned.
You make a difference every day. You share the gospel. You inspire believers. You offer wholesome family entertainment and so much more. We're thankful for you. And as year-end approaches, we're sharing some strategic giving options that may give you a tax break too. First is a rollover gift from your IRA. If you're 70 and a half years or older, you can give up to $100,000 from your IRA and not add a penny to your taxable income. If you're 73 or older, it counts toward your required minimum distribution. Second, consider donating appreciated assets. Donate stocks or property you've held for more than a year and you often get a tax deduction, plus avoid the capital gains tax too. For more information about these or other strategic giving options, contact us at 412-349-4361 or email info at ctvn.org. Thank you for changing lives and sharing hope together with Cornerstone Television Network. Well, welcome, Tom Hollis. I'm so excited to have you today. Can you talk to us about this article? You know, I didn't know that you had this gift of like fiction writing in you. Well, I <laughs> like to imagine the portions of scripture as if uh, I was one of the characters kind of feeling, you know, one of the biblical characters or sometimes maybe another character that I sort of just throw in there. I'm not rewriting the Bible here now. This is just, you know. It's a little like just, The Chosen. Uh, well, uh, you know. You might need I, to call them up. They might want to hire you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that. But what I did was I, I, I decided to, to write from uh, the perspective of a young girl living in Bethlehem. And I even, I, I called her Shoshana. I even looked up first century Jewish names, you know, to try to see what, what a, a name might be. And that was one of them. So I picked Shoshana and I, I wrote it from that perspective of, of her kind of creeping up. She kind of sees everything that's happening. She sees like the angels from way far away because they, they came to the shepherds, remember? So they, they're kind of off on the hill, but she sort of sees that and she knows. Also another thing from the perspective of someone from Bethlehem, is that they know that they're the promised town where the Messiah is going to come from. Right. And her dad uh, would have encouraged her in that, you know. Mm -hmm. And so she goes and creeps up to the stable and kind of enters in, kind of invited by Joseph in and just thinks about all the things. And here's the long awaited king. And I, I just love thinking like that. What is it like for an Israelite of that time, a, a, a Jewish person? What is it like for them? long waited for Messiah, and here is his promise announced by angels. Wow, so talk to me about like, just in this Christmas season in your own family, like do you sit down and tell stories? Like what was your inspiration for this? Well, no, we always read Luke chapter two. We mm -hmm. kind of read that before we open up any presents and, I, and we like that, you know, but uh, you know, and uh, of course I always think of Linus uh, uh, saying par a part of that. But um, again, my inspiration was to uh, think about what would it be like for a person, and now again, I wrote about a young girl, but think about anybody waiting all these years for the Messiah, realizing the history of Israel, that they had their glorious time with David and then Solomon, and then they started to slide, you know, things started to go away and they had times and seasons where prophets or kings or priests would bring them back to the place that they needed to be. But then they never really fulfilling, you know, they never really took the whole promised land that, that was promised right. to them. But they, and, and, and they just sort of, you know, they sort of got dragged into Babylon. And there's a great Psalm where it talks about, we sadly hung our harps because we can't sing God's song in a foreign land. And then, then they're back but no Messiah yet. Where's the Messiah? Where's this promised King? Where's this one that's going to deliver us? And, and, and especially again in Bethlehem, realizing this is you, Bethlehem Ephratah, you who are little among Judah, from you shall he come, uh, who is to be ruler in Israel. And to think that the Bethlehemites would have really been looking into, there's a star and there's angels and all of a sudden shepherds come bursting through the door as she's sitting there in my little story here. Um, as shepherds come and they tell of what they had seen and, uh, and, and the glory of that. And, and, the thing, and, and think about for our own lives. Mm -hmm. Maybe we've served God for a long time. We say, well, wait a minute, God, I, I thought this, I thought I was going to do this for you. I thought this was going to be the way. And, and, you, and, and life has been different. 
God still has, and, and I just want to speak to somebody out there, God still has for you that, that thing that, that you're waiting for, that, that promise. Hang on to that. You know, God redirects us, and he never really takes us back. He takes us on. If we've, if we've messed up, and many of us have, God uh, says, return to me, and I'll show you where I'm going to put you. That's what God wants for all of us to take from this story. Amen. That's so powerful. I love that you're just bringing this to life. I think so often when we read, you know, the Bible, sometimes we don't really apply it to like us mm -hmm. as hu human beings. So you've done a beautiful job of just expounding on this particular story at Christmas time and it can become so busy, so mundane, like we just do what we do. You know, it's Christmas, it's busy, but it's so important, Tom, that we take the time to really examine the Word of God and what are we celebrating Christmas for? And so much of the Word of God is our stories. They're stories, you know, the, the, the Bible doesn't just give us, you know, 50 things we need to do. <laughs> it's not like a list of, of activities, you know, or it's not like a, uh, it, it, it's so much more than even the 10 commandments or even the book of Proverbs, which is wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful maxims, axioms of, of truth that we need to hang on to. But there's so much to the stories, the stories of Jesus, the stories in the book of Judges, the stories of David over Goliath, you know, the stories of Daniel, mm -hmm. all these things are there for us to learn from a God who interacts with us, a God who is there in our story. And so if anybody's out there and your story doesn't seem to be uh, having God moving in it, I, I just want to tell you that God is desiring so much to be the same God that he was for Gideon, to be the same God that he was for David, to be the same God that he was for the uh, the acts of the apostles and how he entered in and, you know, took Philip from a great revival and sent him out on a desert road, you know, but he had a plan and a purpose and God's got that plan and purpose for you today. He's got something that he wants to do. Maybe you're waiting and you're saying, I've, I don't know, God. Uh, yeah, Shoshana and her family from Bethlehem waited a long time, many, many centuries before they saw the fulfillment of all the way back in the Garden of Eden of, of the beginning of the, the Messiah was going to come and he was going to crush the devil's head. And that same promise is your promise today if you're following after Christ. Amen. Well, and that's what we're all about here at Cornerstone is helping people to know God. And we're so thankful for every donation that you've ever given mm -hmm. to support this network that we can continue to make God known. But I just, I want to ask you to pray over our audience. You know, Christmas comes with sometimes baggage for people that isn't as pleasant or, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But God desires to make himself so known and just that quietness of their heart. Would you pray over our viewing Absolutely. audience? Father, we thank you for everyone who's watching, everyone who is part of our family here. And Lord, we just pray that you will visit them and, and, and just put them in a solid place, Lord, where their hearts are at peace in this time of peace. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Tom. And coming up next, we're going to have Sydney Goldman. She's going to tell us of an exciting new adventure. Stay tuned. All year long, your support helped us witness personal and family healing, salvations and breakthroughs. I'm Amanda Brocker, one of the hosts on Hope Today. Many of these miracles, like this one from Margie, are heard through our 24-7 prayer line. Margie shared that her brother-in-law, who's in hospice, accepted the Lord. Our prayer center will receive 60,000 calls by the end of the year. We couldn't make this impact without you. Merry Christmas. Welcome to the special segment of Hard Questions. That's where we gather pastors and take on your questions and answer them from the Bible. So take a listen to this call. I was wondering if the Magi saw the hosts of angels in the sky like the shepherds did. Okay, interesting question. I wonder who all saw that. The shepherds certainly did. Pastor Glaze. Well, you know, the scripture says in Matthew chapter 2 that they saw the star. Yeah. and that they followed the star. So 
uh, I'm not sure if there was angels singing and angels rejoicing in, in the heavens. You know, I don't, I don't know that, but th what we can definitely uh, agree with is that the scripture says it was a star. And, you know, I believe that, you know, they were from the east. So, you know, Daniel had talked about the time that the Messiah would appear. So I believe that, you know, maybe they had access to some of Daniel's information and then they were kind of looking and, the, and then God used that star to guide them to Jerusalem. Right. Clear. And, and I believe where the scripture is silent, let's not let the, don't make the scripture speak where the scripture is silent. Um, interesting thing, I'm preparing now, like I'm sure the other guys are, for Christmas. It's interesting, here these guys were known as wise astrologers. They were uh, mighty men of knowledge. And we have these mighty men of knowledge stopping off for directions. Yeah. I'll leave that there. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, right? I don't think they did. Um, and I'm going to say, because when you try to put the Gospels together, and the only birth accounts and uh, the nativity accounts we get of Christ are Matthew and Luke. And the Magi show up in Ma Matthew. And they go to Herod. They want to know, you know, where the Messiah is going to be born. And, and they see the star and they're led to uh, Bethlehem. They tell them Bethlehem. Uh, but right after that, uh, remember, Herod wants to kill them. And, and Joseph has to take Mary and the baby and flee to Egypt. But in Luke, we're told that after Jesus is born, you know, eight days later, they take him up to the temple and circumcise him. And then after that, 40, you know, a, a total of 40 days, Mary goes up because that's how long it was. According to Leviticus 12, a woman was impure after a boy baby for 40 days. And then they go up and that's when they have the encounter with Simeon. And that's when they have the encounter uh, with Anna. And so they're living in Bethlehem, which is close to Jerusalem. They're going up to the temple. And then after that, they go back to Jerusalem. They're getting ready to move to Nazareth. And that's when the Magi come. So the Magi probably come a month and a half, maybe two months after Jesus is born, so the angels have been long gone. Okay, yeah, angels weren't hanging around, let's say, hanging around, wait for the Magi. Uh, I'm just gonna throw a little commentary on because yeah. I think they pretty much have covered what it was, but I think it's really unique, going back to what Pastor Pete had mentioned as well, that they, God used their language to lead them to Christ. Yeah. He used yeah. it, what it was that they were special to, you know, because he spoke to one, the, the shepherds with the angels, spoke to the Magi through the stars. And it's amazing how Christ has the ability to transcend and speak to us through our own language. And it led them right to where the Messiah was. That's right. I know the Bible clearly speaks against astrology and certainly, the, but God used what they knew to get them to the Messiah. If you, if you pick up the December newsletter uh, from uh, Hope Today, the Hope Today newsletter, you will see an article in there that I wrote about a little girl in Bethlehem that I imagine saw a lot of the stuff going on. So it was kind of fun to sort of imagine that, but I don't think the Magi were around to uh, see the angels. Thank you, great question. There are some big changes coming up with Cornerstone Television and Sydney Goldman is here to give us the scoop. You gotta lay this out for us. I need times. I wanna know all the details. <laughs> Tell us what is God speaking to you? Well, thank you so much. I'm just so excited to be with you, Amanda. So yes, big changes are coming. So I am not gonna be on Hope Today anymore because I am pioneering a new show, a new podcast called The Glory Hour with Sydney Goldman. And it's all about being focused on culturally relevant conversations from a spiritual perspective. And so, you know, my heart is always what's news and what's happening in the world. But I think it is so important in this season of everything that we're seeing, all the shakings, all the rumblings, things that are going on in culture, we need to have a voice out there and be understanding and discerning of the signs and the times of what's going on. So I'm super excited, super honored, so joyful, you know, that Cornerstone and the whole team is just really supportive of me doing this new venture, but I'm truly grateful for what's about to come. Amen. So this is going to be on the YouTube platform. Yes. So what will people search? Will they still search Cornerstone on YouTube or how will they find the glory? The glory, the, the glory, glory hour. hour. So the there way to go. like go. So if you were looking for it, you can go to our YouTube channel. So it's Cornerstone Television Network. There'll be a playlist and you can click and you can watch it. So that's the other thing too, is that we know media shifting, media is changing mm -hmm. and that we have, you know, on Cornerstone, we have a thriving community that's on there. We have more than 70,000 subscribers. And so even the heart of this is to tap into that generation and to those viewers that are watching and reaching out to millennials and Gen Z also as well, because those are, that's a big chunk. I mean, 
and there's all different generations that are on our YouTube channel, but really the heart is to reach that next generation because Amanda, I think about, you know, with Jesus is when he told the disciples, cast the net to the other side and we are a network. And yes, we've been starting out in television, but in this season, God has expanded our reach and he's done it through, you know, streaming platforms like YouTube and Roku and other places like that. So this is really a big opportunity where I'm excited, where it's like, we're reaching the heart of Jesus. I mean, excuse me, we're reaching, you know, others like through the power of the gospel, helping them to understand this is what's going on in our world, but this is what God is saying about it. And so bringing voices to share in that, I'm just really looking forward to see all that God is going to do. Amen. I know that you've been excited about the YouTube viewership is yeah. not just even in America. Like yeah. it's been from around the world. It has literally taken the network of Cornerstone to other countries and that has been super exciting for you. Yeah, and I, I just think of like Russ and Norma Bixler that, you know, they said everybody ought to know who Jesus is and, you know, to, um, to reach his, the, I'm forgetting the name, the turn, the signal, raise his signal high. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Raise his signal high to That's the right. nations. And so what we are doing, and I think even, you know, our partners is that we have to realize that we are doing just that, that we have analytics and we can see that it's reaching, you know, we reach out to the United States and different countries right. all around the world. We've gotten feedback from places from Pakistan. I mean, just different places where we are doing that thing that God has called us to do. You know, we're going into our 45th year here at Cornerstone Television network. So I think it's an amazing time. It's an awesome time that all of us are banding together as one. And we're like, we're going to reach and share the love of Jesus mm -hmm. like never before. Because you know, Amanda, one thing I know oftentimes that we say, like people say, don't watch the news and these things. My heart is honestly, please watch the news. Please be engaged. Please understand what is going on because we can no longer be the sheep with the wool over our eyes. There's things that are happening and going on in our world. And so I just truly believe we are called to be like the sun of Issachar. We are called to know what is happening in the day and hour. You know, we're talking about Jesus is coming back. He's, he's given us a blueprint in Matthew of rumors of war and earthquakes and these shakings and rumblings. We're seeing what's happening in Israel. God is trying to tell his people, wake up wake up my bride, wake up and know what's going on so we can intercede, so we can pray, so we can be aware because we are literally, if we do not speak on these things, we're gonna lose a generation and they're not gonna know Jesus. And so what I see and what I've seen from different platforms, whether it's TikTok or YouTube, there's all these conversations where people are desperate and searching for answers because they see what's going on. How does God fit in this picture? Well, we know there's a scripture, we know that there's answers and everything can be found through Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, I am so excited for the glory hour. And Sydney, if it was not for the partners who give in to Cornerstone, like it wouldn't even be an option for us to do this. Yeah. So I would just love for you to, you and your glory self, <laughs> just pour out over yeah. our viewing audience and let them know your gratitude for them. Yeah, be honored to. I just want to say to each and every one of you that uh, has been part of my journey. I've been at Cornerstone for eight years. You've seen me from the beginning and now to where I am. And so I just want to say thank you for your support. Thank you for your partnership. Thank you for linking arms with us because if it wasn't for you and for your prayers and for your support, for tuning in and to watching and just sharing, you know, the needs and desires on your heart, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. And so it is an honor to every day come into your living room, whether you're watching on your TV or if you're on your mobile phone, we love the opportunity, it is a joy to share the good news of Jesus. It's our joy to give you information. It's our joy to give you hope in such uncertain times. And that's what we're dedicated to. That's my heart for this program, for the Glory Hour, is for this podcast, is literally to be a, mouth a mouthpiece, literally to silence the enemy because there's so many voices, but we know that our God is greater. We know that our God is with us. We know that he is Adonai El Shaddai, like he is more than enough. And if we can just lock on to that, if we can just hold on to that, and if it wasn't for you for 45 years of partnering with Cornerstone, of your faithful partnership in giving, we would not be here. So thank you for your support. Thank you for your partnership. Thank you all that you do for this network so we can go another 45 years strong. This is so exciting and y'all, all I can see is like we're going after the next generation. This platform is gonna reach them. It's gonna come up in searches when people are wondering. I'm, I'm seeing it as I'm using more of a YouTube platform now for my own viewing pleasure. It's like you can see more people are being attracted to the things that are out there and we need to be present. So I just thank you for your obedience to the Lord ultimately, and he is using you 
to bring change and to make a difference. And that's what we're all about here at Cornerstone. So thank you. We can't wait to tune into this podcast for the glory hour. Well, we'll be right back after this. I sure have enjoyed our time together and learning about the behind the scenes here at Cornerstone, all the exciting things that are coming up. You're going to have to stay tuned and be watching for that glory hour. I know we don't want to miss it, but I just want to get back to some of the letters that those of you wrote into us. This comes from Nancy. Thank you for your prayers for Brian. He is now making progress. He's at the Salvation Army Recovery Center. Much work is still ahead, but God is faithful. Continue to please pray for him for great days ahead. Well, we agree with you, Nancy, that the Lord will continue to set Brian free and he will walk out the plans and purposes of God for his life. And this comes from Lula. She said, thank you for your prayers for my granddaughters, blood pressure and the delivery of her baby at 27 weeks. Praise God. She and the baby are doing well. She's still in ICU because of her blood pressure, but it, she is coming down slowly but surely to God be the glory. Well, Lula, we stand in faith with you and we are grateful to have those prayer partners always standing by and that God is moving. He hears the cries of his people. And this comes from Sydney. She said, thank you for your work in the ministry and what you produce over the airways and the shows to the glory of God. And that is just it. I keep thinking of that glory hour. It's, it's going to be happening, y'all. We don't want to miss out. Tune in for that glory hour. This is from Ralph and Tracy. They said, Happy Thanksgiving. We appreciate all you do and thank the Lord for your ministry. You have touched our family in many ways you may never know, at least not in this lifetime. And we feel sure your ministry has touched a multitude of others. Thanks so much. You know, it's why we do what we do is to see lives change, to see them impacted for the glory of God. And all that is made possible by you, our faithful donors. So thank you. This is from my ring. She asked for prayer that she would be able to walk without a walker. She said, I'm in physical therapy presently and I am thankful for Cornerstone Network. It is so inspiring. Well, Myring, we agree that God would be the stability in those legs and in every muscle and part of your being that you will walk in Jesus name and you'll walk out to fulfill God's plan. You know, there is nothing more important than to walk out that plan that God has for your life. You know, he loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus. And that's what we celebrate at Christmas time. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever would believe would not perish but have eternal life. Do you know Jesus? Because that's our heart's desire is for you to know him today. <music> ¶¶